Hey everyone, DW Berman here with an update. A few weeks ago, a little while ago, I uploaded a video called uh, Using Character Animator Lip Sync in Lightwave 3D 2018. Uh, it, I was happy with the technique, so I shared it, and uh, this video is kind of an update on that. I developed things a little further, and also uh, another exciting piece of news is one of the commenters down here uh, said he liked the tutorial, saved him a lot of time. And uh, I mentioned in the tu in the tutorial that this could probably be made easier with an L script. And uh, quick pro quick programming here um, made a little L script. So uh, as you can see in my timeline here, this is one of my demo scenes. You have a keyframe on every single key, or you have a key on every single frame. And that's because the method I showed in the other tutorial was to go into Character Animator. And, uh, actually I can show you here. Basically the, the trick was to go in the character animator and then right click on the, uh, the track that had all of your visimes, copy visimes for After Effects. Then you go to After Effects and paste it in there onto a channel that, uh, Lightwave could, uh, use. In which case, uh, was, in that case it was a spotlight because spotlights can come over into Lightwave, uh, by using just the interchange tools that come with Lightwave. However, and now that we have the script, we can paste that into a notepad and save it, and we'll call this demo2.txt. It's not a very good name. Uh, Lightwave test, just making sure I know where it is. Then we can go over to uh, load up the script. We just go to L script. We'll run our script. We find our file. In which case it was, what was it? Demo two. Open it up. Select an item to, case to, to paste the keyframe. Doesn't have to be a light in this case. Um, let, me, let me actually just make a null. And then we'll do that again. Run the L script. Pick our file. Demo 2. Open. Select our null. And it'll put it on the Y position. This is a guy's uh, first L script. Uh, so here you can see this null does not have all of the... Uh, I mean, this time we don't have a keyframe a key on every single frame so we can actually edit these a lot easier a lot more easily if i hit control f2 to bring up my graph editor we can take a look and see the null position on this we'll zoom in here and you can see it's set up so that it has a range of zero to uh basically 1.2 because there are 12 visimes uh that character animator spits out using the lip sync thing uh, there are things like smile and surprise that are uh, not uh, included in the lip sync, but we can add them in later if we want by manually animating it. But you can see that the uh, these are set so that it will um, it doesn't slide between the values; it steps between the values, and that's what we need for this type of mouth replacement animation. So that's the first big thing. Uh, we have this fantastic little L script in here, and the link is in the comment section. Um, at some point, we may put it up some other place. Now, my idea for L script, I don't think I fleshed out my idea. Um, what I thought would be cool is if you have a, a command in Lightwave or a button in Lightwave where you click on it and it opens up a, a text box, and you can just paste directly into the text box and then tell it where to go and what values to affect. But... Uh, this is pretty cool and again we have a much cleaner timeline that makes it much easier to just kind of you know drag these keyframes around and change the timing if we want and even you know add in our you know change the uh, value if you want but uh the other thing the other thing i wanted to, to bring up in this uh, video was i've uh come up with another way to do the um the morph on the morph channels um so let's let me, I'll load up another scene. I don't want to save it, so just load. So here we have our morph 
going here. This is different than it was before. In the other video, I used a gradient so that uh, the each morph was put into a key on a gradient, and that, that would be like this down here, where each key, like each one of these things, represents a different morph. The issue with this, and the reason I kind of made a different version, is if I want to go from, say, uh, position 3, you know, mouth shape 3 to mouth shape 7, it's going to slide through all the other mouth shapes along the way. Um, but what I've done here is I've used some logic nodes to change the value of the morph. So I have the morph here, but this is our morph shape. We can select the morph shape we want. But the value here kind of just goes into a mount, and then all of the different morphs get added together, and then they pop out here. This is another, this is, this is a compound node. It's just kind of combining all of the different morphs together down into one output for our displacement input. So um, the idea behind this was to possibly put something in between here and here so that um, we can vary the amount of the morph. So like right now, it's either on or off. So here we can see, uh, by the way, this little doohickey up here is our logic probe, I think it's called. This lets us see the values of the outputs. So we can see right now that uh, shape E is selected, and all of the other ones are zero. So E is one, so that's completely on, and all of the other ones are completely off. Now, we could, in theory, blend these a little bit. We have like a you know, 0.8 here and a 0.1 here and kind of fade in between. I'm not sure how to do that. That's a little beyond me. I mean, I know how to do that. I just don't know how to automate it uh, so that, you know, we have something that flips from zero to one and then somehow it eases in and out, uh, even though it's the, the source is flipping from zero to one. Um, but anyway, the, the way this one works is this uses a, a series of logic nodes. And I wanted to point this out because some other programs might not have uh, the, the way you can map things in Lightwave with a gradient. I'm sure that there are. I'm sure other applications have something similar. I believe in Maya it's called a ramp. Uh, but this is just another way to do it. Um, basically, I have my integer coming out of here, and basically this processes that uh, incoming signal and makes it so that it is a solid integer. So like right now, 3 is selected. So that comes into logic node 3, and logic 3 says, node 3 says, does A equal B? And if A equals B, then true. So 1. So basically, it says, hey, is this number 3? Yes. So send a 1 down to the output here on uh, number E. So all of these other ones are going to be 0 because, say, logic 8, you know, A is not equal to 8, so send out a 0. So basically we're just using a logic node to kind of separate the values out so that uh, instead of having an integer value between 0 and 15, we have a series of 15 outputs and only one is going to be on at a time. One is going to be one at a time, if that makes any sense. So uh, hopefully that will help people adapt this process to other applications that might not map things the same way uh, with a gradient in but that's it's kind of a side effect the the, uh, the reason the real reason I broke this out into separate pieces is so that we could potentially go from say uh, shape blend from shape F to shape R and in between um, kind of instead of just popping from one shape to another kind of blended in between the issue is I, I don't really know how to blend from this in this section here. Uh, so it's kind of like some kind of inertia thing that kind of looks ahead, but I'm not sure it, how uh, that would be set up. That's a bit beyond me. So this is where it's at now. I, there are two ways to uh, to run these uh, images and and or at least the morphs through. 
and uh, you have the gradient method and you have this logic node method and uh, also again we have that uh, little L script that uh, quick programming wrote up and uh, that will help make the uh, process a bit quicker so uh, thanks for watching I hope this was interesting and helpful and uh, have a great day